I'm going to be talking about uh, Bluetooth technology and in the sense that within about 50 minutes, I'm going to go through the basics of what Bluetooth technology is and how you can use it. First of all, we're going to have an introduction to Bluetooth technology. And in that respect, there are three different areas where I want to cover today. The first area is something called Bluetooth basic rate, enhanced data rate, which you'll sometimes hear as Bluetooth BR slash EDR. I'm also going to talk about something called high speed, as well as the new technology that uh, people know as Bluetooth smart, but within the technical community, we know as Bluetooth low energy. And then the last thing I'm going to talk about is attribute protocol and generic attribute profile. Once I've covered all of that, then I'm going to look at how you test, qualify, and brand your products. So to start, I'm going to do a quick introduction to what Bluetooth technology is. The best way of looking at this is to look at it from a time evolutionary point of view. So Bluetooth technology started back in 1998. Uh, I certainly got involved in 2000, uh, so I've been involved in this for over 13 years now. It's quite scary, really. And, but when we look at the technology as we have today, there are three main specifications that we need to look at. The version 2.1 that came out in roughly 2007, that introduced a technology called Secure Simple Pairing that allows a device to securely pair with another device with a very simple user interface. So for example, the last time I rented a car in France, I turned on Bluetooth, I pressed a button on the car uh, that had some sort of talky uh, symbol on it, and it said, does this number match what is shown on your phone? And I said, yes, on both devices, and they were paired. I didn't have to type in a number or anything complicated like that. It just authenticated that this was the right device. 3.0 came out in 2009. 2009, uh, we introduced something called high speed. So this is where we enable applications to use an alternate Mac and Phi. And the first one we introduced was based off the IEEE 80211 specification that allowed us to use higher speed Macs to send large amounts of data very, very quickly. And then the one that is causing all the buzz at the moment was introduced in 2010, which was version four of the specification, and that introduced something called Bluetooth Low Energy. And this was a completely new uh, way of looking at how to get data between two devices, very, very low power. So it enabled a whole new set of applications in different markets, including, for example, healthcare, sports and fitness, security, home entertainment. I even have some on my bicycle. A lot of people look at Bluetooth and say, well, I'm rather confused, what does it do? So here is a very, very large table. Um, and what we're gonna do is compare Bluetooth basic rate and EDR with Bluetooth low energy. So they both use the same radio frequency. So they're both in the 2.4 gigahertz ISM band. They both have similar ranges. They're both between about 10 to 100 meters. Although Bluetooth low energy is slightly further. I know it, it seems rather strange that we've made it lower power and longer range at the same time, but actually that's how it, it does work. Bluetooth low energy has a one megabit per second physical data rate, whereas basic rate had the same one megabit per second, but could use it much more efficiently. So while low energy can transmit data up to about 250, 300 kilobits per second, a basic rate can transmit that at 721 kilobits per second. So about two to three times faster. And the EDR mode, which was introduced in the 1.2 specification, that allows you to get up to three megabits per second at the phi layer, or about 2.1 megabits per second at the application. And I remember the first time I did this, uh, I actually did it in a chamber uh, about 35,000 feet away from any other Bluetooth device. Um, admittedly, it was over the middle of Wisconsin at the time in an American Airlines flight, uh, but we did get 2.1 megabits a second, and I was rather proud of that. 
In terms of the number of devices that you can have connected, basic rate allows effectively seven, and EDR didn't change that. We also have the ability to park devices, and in that scenario, we can have up to 16 million. But Bluetooth Low Energy effectively has no restriction. There is a restriction. It's about 2.1 billion devices connected to a single master. Uh, if you can find 2.1 billion devices and purchase them all and put them within about 100 meters of the master, I don't want to be anywhere near you, okay? So yes, there is a limit, but it's not a practical limit that you're going to come across. In terms of security, Basic Rate uses uh, a security scheme called E0 and then has a uh, 128-bit AES uh, in the AMP, in the high speed. Um, and you can do application layer security on top of that. Uh, Bluetooth Low Energy uses 128-bit AES out of the box. And this is something that we're adding into classic Bluetooth or Bluetooth basic rate now as well. In terms of robustness, they both use something called adaptive frequency hopping that allows devices to ad adaptively frequency hop around other interferers. It's really funny, we had a support call uh, in at CSR the other week where somebody says, your Bluetooth low energy device doesn't work because it doesn't hop on these frequencies. And we asked them a very simple question. Do you have a Wi-Fi access point in your office? And they go, yes. Is it on channel six? They go, how did you know? It's like, because our Bluetooth device detected it and hopped around it so that your Bluetooth, your Wi-Fi wasn't interfered with by Bluetooth. And they go, wow, that's amazing. In terms of latency, this is where Bluetooth Low Energy really does win. Bluetooth Low Energy was designed to be able to send a very small amount of data very, very quickly. So the latency from disconnected to sending application data, having that acknowledged and then disconnecting is about three milliseconds. So quicker than you can blink. Just try blinking now, see how quick that is. Now imagine Bluetooth Low Energy going a lot quicker than that. Basic rate was designed to have a connection up all the time. So when you're in your car or you've got your Bluetooth headset on or you're streaming music, that connection is up all the time. And therefore, it wasn't designed around having the connection going up and down and up and down. Bluetooth Low Energy is, which is why that number is different. In terms of regulatory acceptance, they're both available worldwide. They both use the 2.4 gigahertz ISM band, as I've said before, and they both comply with regulatory requirements all around the world. Bluetooth basic rate is voice capable. So you can do conversational audio, you can do uh, high quality stereo music. Uh, in my hotel room last night, for example, I selected some music on my, uh, on my phone and started playing that through some speakers I brought with me because it's much nicer to walk around the room and not have earbuds in your ear, but still listen to high quality music. Bluetooth Low Energy is not voice capable, so you can't do audio today. Although I will say that there has been a new work proposal just approved by the board to do uh, unidirectional audio for the hearing aid use case. And if you're interested in that, please come and join the hearing aid study group and we can progress that specification further. In terms of the network topology, the basic rate Bluetooth works on something called Scatternet. And I'll go into more details of what that is later. Whereas low energy is designed around something called a star bus. And a star bus is where you basically have individual stars that are connected together over a bus network. In terms of power consumption, if we say that one is the reference for what basic rate support. So, you know, if you take a chip from a cell phone or a computer or something like that, then let's say that that uses one unit of energy. Bluetooth low energy uses somewhere between 0 0.01 and 0 0.5, depending upon the use case. We've got use cases now where the lifetime of the battery is shorter than the lifetime of the battery. So there is more energy in the battery than the device can use for the lifetime of the battery. You buy a battery from a store and it has a date on it when that battery will run out. We are using so little energy in Bluetooth low energy that the lifetime of that battery is the limiting factor 
for how long that device will work. And then service discovery. One of the key things in Bluetooth is that we can do service discovery. It's what a lot of other technologies haven't really got right yet. We can take two Bluetooth devices and they can work out what they can do with each other. Not only that, but if you've got, say, a, a computer and a device, a, a peripheral or a cell phone and a peripheral, if you haven't got the right application software, then you just download a new app. And hey, presto, you now can use that. But you know which app to download because the computer or the phone can lead you in that direction.